I say it's no pastor, it's my hero. <laughs> There's more and more attorneys getting involved, and they're really believing in the Constitution, and it's, uh, to me it's a pretty good thing. Because I think overall many of you agree attorneys are part of the problem we're having in our legal system. <laughs> That's what uh, I think that's what Bob said to me the other day. He says, 99% of attorneys give the others a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> John Adams said, liberty cannot be preserved without a general knowledge among the people. Kind of similar theme. This is a problem we have, isn't it? Kids looking at communism and fascism and thinking it's a good thing. Now, it's drawing them today because they see problems all around them. But the problems around them is because we're not following the Constitution, not because we need to change to communism. But she would know that. Mark Twain, irreverence is the champion of liberty. It's the only defender. Wouldn't expect to see him here, would you? Uh, this is just a note about a guy, a, kind of a, a guy that ran from the cops in California. This wasn't me. California criminals. The, this guy was being chased by the police in California. He pulled over, or he got out in the country kind of. There's a wooded area, so he pulled over, jumped the fence. So I got, it's dark out. He said, I can run from these cops. So he stops his car, runs out through the woods, and sneaking all around out there. And uh, the, the, there's no helicopters, no dogs, so these cops just, wherever he went, the cops kept pounding right in on him. And uh, he got caught and his, got his handcuffs and said, how'd you guys find me, you know? He says, well, you got those sneakers on with the red lights every time you take a step? <laughs> 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 California criminals aren't too bright. <clears throat> I'm just gonna quickly tell you about our organization. We are sponsoring this uh, meeting, and we hope to sponsor a lot more around the country and get uh, more organizations moving around the country. Um, for a basic membership, you get an official membership card. You get to attend regular society meetings at no charge. This is not a, uh, this is kind of a special meeting, but you do get a discount. FES newsletters come out. We have a handbook tells you all the services and support that we have. Eligible for optional programs, which I'll briefly explain. Also, a verified ID card available, which I'll talk about. Uh, knowledge at your Sporting America. You know what we do with the. Uh, 55 a year to be a member. What we do with that is just try to get more catalogs, more newsletters out, get more radio programs, be on the television. To me, it's education. This is not a, it is legal. There's a, there's a, I don't think there's anything wrong with the legal system. It's the people in the system. I think we'd agree, and same with the governments. The form of government we have, I think it's very good. We just have crooks in there. And most people don't know it or don't care. This is the membership card or the uh, verified ID card. You know, they were trying to put in, and they, they kind of did a national ID called the Real ID Act. And uh, some of you know I don't like carrying a driver's license and stuff, but they, one, one officer, about it was 1999, an officer arrested me because I didn't have a government issue ID. But I did have ID. I had two forms of picture ID that I made myself. And he didn't like that. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with it. And it wasn't the wrong name or anything like that. So he, I sued the officer, I sued the county of Fresno for the next couple of years. But what was brought up was I thought was really interesting in the, in the depositions and, and the county council kept giving me court cases that you have to have government issue ID and we look at the case and the word government's not in it. You have to have picture ID, I had two picture IDs. <laughs> yeah, but you made them yourself. It doesn't say I can't make it myself, you know. And uh, we, we uh, we didn't win the case, but we didn't really lose. It kind of just got got lost after a while because I couldn't keep spending all the time on it. But at, uh, that officer, I gave him a lot of information. He was very thankful <laughs> to be over with it. But I don't think he'll pick me up again. But on the back of this, it says an officer must accept this as satisfactory. This ID came about as a result of my arrest. Something better that I think we can take into court. I didn't want to take my homemade ID up to the Ninth Circuit. Uh, but something like this, I'm, I would feel more confident. We're kind of trying to grandfather in a national ID that's private as opposed to what the government wants to do to us. So that's what that's about. We have a sports service that helps you help yourself in dealing with IRS or it says franchise tax board, that's California, but it's really a state income tax issues. Uh, initial consultations we do, state of the art research tools we have available to our researchers and paralegals help with government agencies other than tax agencies. Our paralegals have helped sue 
for example, illegal search and seizure on school grounds with members, children, that kind of thing, and won some money through civil rights cases, paralegal assistance or attorney referrals. Uh, we're not attorneys here, but we do know many attorneys. Some of them are sitting in the back that's helped us on cases. I know Larry has. And uh, uh, this charge only if you use the service. And call if you're not sure if you have a problem with some government agency. I would see if we have anything on it. If we don't have anything on it, we may know someone that does. We even got people that have fight dog license, for example. So. <laughs> <coughs> this is 30 a year to be a member, and then it's a fee for service basis. The legal defense fund helps you ch if you're charged with failure to file income tax returns. It assists you in uh, with also finding submitting our false yeah, called, submitting a false project. W-4 form. Um, what that is, is when they when you claim exempt, they were trying to say that's a false or fraudulent W-4. We don't think it is, but we'll cover that. Pays for attorneys when needed. Supports those members who are in the courts. How many, do we have any members of legal defense in here? Okay, a few of you, all right. Well, uh, you know, hopefully a lot of you won't need the legal defense fund, but by working together, we we're able to get the money to, to defend these cases because they're expensive. That helps fund everyone by helping make the way easier. You know, if you, if you don't have any help or don't have any support or don't have the money, what are you going to do? You're going to plead guilty the government gets what they want. Mm -hmm. This is 750 initial fee and then 420 a year or $40 a month. Now here's some people that have won major cases. Bernie Coogan with the FedEx pilot made way above average. The attorney that handled that case is right here in this room, Larry Beecraft. And uh, the, the side kick burn off. Was he with you? Yeah, I was a ride along. I didn't know that. I'm serious. <laughs> well, the, the attorneys in Hamilton Brady Cookman's case are in this room. Look at that. But she's a FedEx pilot, made more than the jury, which is one of the things they like to do in a trial, kind of get like a class difference. And uh, they come back with not guilty. So, Larry Tommy Cryer, some of you met him the last time we were through here. Now, most of the time when an attorney gets charged, he has a real tough time. You, you also met the attorney for his case, which is Larry Beecraft. And you too this time? <laughs> <laughs> um, some people, when you get charged, get the benefit of the doubt. You know, hey, I studied the law and I read the codes and I came to these conclusions. And, and uh, you know, if you're not an attorney, they, you know, the jury might give you some benefit of the doubt. Well, yeah, he did read the law and they came to conclusions, but he's a construction worker and he's not trained in the law. And we're going to give him some benefit of the doubt. He, he probably really believed what he did, but, but uh, you know, he came to the wrong conclusion or something like that. But if you're an attorney like time, you can't do that. So he went right at him and said, yeah, I made money, so what? I'm not liable for the tax. And the jury just couldn't seem to come around to that conclusion either, and they acquitted Tom Cryer of failure to file. Joe Bass, you might have met him too. <laughs> the attorney that handled that case happens to be in this room. <laughs> That's not true. That was me. I really don't have to cover this since he's, this is here. I, I really don't have to cover this one because he was already talking about his case. Usually he's not here. But anyway. Uh, this is a very interesting case because he is former IRS turned on him, and they don't like that, do they, Joe? No, they're unhappy with I mean, this was a vendetta. I mean, it was a, and this is probably, I mean, even though those other cases were pretty devastating, I think Joe's case was the most devastating to him. They, they probably still mad about that because <laughs> they, they should have never messed with him. <laughs> this is some of the cases we had in California. In California, Gene Lampson, Des Lampson, and Phil D. We overturned those on appeal. In California, we have a right to counsel, but we also have a, what I think we go a little further with that, we believe we have a right to competent counsel. <laughs> Is there a difference? <laughs> so we, we have these guys look for competent counsel, and you know, as you're looking for attorneys in this kind of case, most of them will say, yeah, I'll handle it for whatever the money is, $50,000, and don't worry about it. Uh, or they'll, and then you say, do you think we're going to win? They say, well, no, of course not. You know you're required to file and pay. <laughs> or something along that line. Are they competent? No. I mean, you want to, you're going to hire somebody to win the case, right? Or they're, or they're too expensive, whatever. We had these guys going into court to the judge. Then, well, I've been looking at it. He was all the attorneys I talked to this last month, you know, whatever, this last week. <laughs> so he kept giving them continuances for about a year. And the judge finally got tired of this and sent them through trial without counsel and without them waiving, specifically waiving counsel. And there's some tricks to that because they try to put a public defender on you and there's you have to get the public defender's office kind of back out, which we were successful at doing in these cases anyway. <coughs> but lack of counsel, and uh, it was, these were three reversals on appeal in California. 
Bruce Anderson acquitted on all counts. He's the first one with one franchise tax board in California, the San Jose, California. And the, I um, can't remember his name right now, the public, public relations director for the franchise tax board. He was always, he's always gone to these hearings with us when we're fighting the franchise tax board, talking to the TV and say how we never lost a case and, and all these things on the TV. And uh, we finally won one, it was Bruce Anderson. Uh, and this was an interesting case. Because they have to prove that you did not file a return. How do they do that? So you filed in the past. Yeah. Most of the time you get on the stand and say it, right? This guy, this time we said, well, maybe we shouldn't put him on the stand. So how are they going to prove it then? Well, they brought in an agent. Ah, you looked at the computer. Eh, no return was filed for that year. It says right here on the computer. Well, maybe it was mailed and was it could have been lost. Maybe he did mail it and it got lost. Could they say that couldn't have happened? Well, that, that's possible, not very big, you know, it's a very unlikely, but yeah. But what do you do with it when you get it? Well, you type it on the computer and then we shred it. Oh, well, maybe you shred it before you type it on the computer, got that mixed up or something, because that happened, could happen, or maybe you lost it. <coughs> IRS flushes them down the toilet. We went through all these th different things. Anyway, the jury acquitted them. If you know what that is, the government's in a position of proving a negative. It was very difficult for them, a virtual impossibility. Now the jury, what's interesting in that case, they thought the person should have filed, but the, the prosecution could prove that he did not. Cindy Grigsby acquitted on all counts, her husband and Jules Grigsby acquitted on one count and remainder dismissed by the court. Now this is Franchise Tax Board California also. They, uh, this was an interesting case because they actually filed a return. It wasn't a normal state return, it was a, a modified state return where they wanted a claim for refund. The state accepted that as a return, and it was on their computers using the Freedom of State Freedom of Information Act. It was on their computers as a return filed until 60 days before trial. They edited that, showed it was not a return, and that's what they testified to in the trial. And we showed, we were able to show part of that to the jury. And uh, they, they acquitted uh, Cindy and Yule's one count, but they, the Franchise Tax Board of California wanted to retry the other counts, but it was like, uh, it was uh, 11 to 1 in favor of acquittal, and the judge would not allow. But basically, they did file it. That was a weird case. Robert Pierce of Michigan had all counts dismissed. This was, an, this was an IRS case, but it was a speedy trial violation. Uh, they have 70 days to get you to trial, or there's game over. And they, you know, they have all kinds of exceptions, but they messed up in this case, and we did get it dismissed. Now, some of you are thinking, well, gee, these are not the issues I want heard in the trial. I want all these great issues we talked about. Well, you know, if your name's on that complaint, you'll be a happy camper, right? <laughs> winning is winning. Brad Lager, also IRS, all felony. This was felony counts, even, and some misdemeanors. We were involved in the case on the misdemeanor side. But this was, we got this case dismissed, and... Uh, because they, they lied to the grand jury. When they got the grand jury indictment, one of the grand jury members asked a pretty good question. The grand jury member asked, well, what would not be willful? Because they were talking about willfulness. Willful failure to file is not a crime. It's willful failure to file that's the crime. It's the willfulness. Willful means in your mind you committed a crime when you did not file. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so one of the jury, grand jury member asked, well, what's not willful? And the IRS agent testified that it would be, if he were unconscious, it would not be willful. <laughs> and the U.S. Attorney agreed. Oh, no. And when the judge saw that, he threw out the indictment. Now, I want to bring up something else while I'm at it. I mean, to me, and I'm not an attorney, but to me, failure to file is just totally ridiculous. I mean, when you commit a crime, if you look up the word commit, you have to do something. You have to hurt somebody or damage someone's property. When you're accused of failing to file, what are you really accused of? Doing nothing. How ridiculous is that? Not only doing nothing, but doing nothing on April 15th of all this. <laughs> and the jury said, hey, he did nothing on April 15th. We gotta put him in jail. And a lot of them do. They don't think of it that way, but it's, how can that be a crime? We have over 25 victories now. That's about two thirds of the cases we were involved with. We can't win them all, but we do a good job of defending them. Now this is, even, the, I don't think the court's going to bring back our freedom. I mean, what we have to do is educate the mass, and we'll talk about that in another segment coming up, too. But Abraham Lincoln said, to send my sons when they should protest makes cowards of men. 
That's what we have. We have a lot of cowards in this country right now because anyway, hey, if I say something, I might lose my job or, or, or you talk about the IRS, they don't even want to come to a meeting because they might get their license number taken down. <laughs> so we talked about that. And uh, Joan of Arc, I'm a little, I'm not politically correct, by the way, uh, which I think is just another word for communism in a way. But Joan of Arc is kind of important to me, but it's, uh, I get in trouble with this sometimes. But Joan of Arc was a pretty interesting story. She was, at the age of 17, she, she led the largest army in the world at that time. And she was uprising against, uh, against England. And uh, she would go around and then she was, and, and uh, many amazing things happened to her. Like the, her commanders would even say, listen, we've come upon some enemy forces over there. And her commanders say, look, the force is way too big. They're on a higher plane. We better come back with more troops. She, and, and instead of listening to the commander, she'd pull her sword and run after him like an idiot. And her commanders, being loyal to her, would run after her with her, and they'd win. And she would get hurt sometimes. One time she got hurt so bad they even dug a grave for her one night because they knew she would be dead by morning. And in the morning she got up and just took off. Didn't even find the wounds. These are the stories around Joan of Arc. And she was, of course, killed in the two years later when she was 19. But here's something she is attributed to her. I, of course, I can't say for sure, but this is what I'm told she says. And it meant something to me because I talk to churches all the time, and they give all kinds of excuses for not dealing with this problem that we're talking about. Oh, you got grace. You can turn your back on evil. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you can't, I don't think. This is what she said. When, you, when we move, God will move. If our founders thought the same way that's in the Declaration of Independence, we'd still be, they'd be sitting there in their death waiting for God to do something. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> that's my view. So anyway, that means something to me. Free Enterprise Society, Sports Services, and the Legal Defense Fund are the three members. Today, if you want to join, I'm going to give you $10 off. Now, some of you already got that $10 off when you joined coming into the door. But we'll still give you the $10 member discount if you, for coming to the meeting if you want to join today. You don't even need the money. You can fill out the application and give us a $45 promise, and we'll take that today. Support service is $30. Again, no money out of your pocket needed today. Uh, we have a lifetime membership, which is normally $850, which today, if you want to sign up, is $750. Again, no money down. Make payments if you want to. Now, that lifetime is not included, does not include, include the legal defense fund. Super League Defense Fund is normally $750. That's not an annual fee. And today uh, it says $550, but I'll even go lower than that. Because here it is, we just <coughs> won a, to, I lost a terrible election. <laughs> I'm going to make this even lower for anybody. If you're a non fire this is something you should be in. So today, if you want to sign up, you can sign up for $400. And again, no money. Just give us, we're going to write on the application $400 down, and then it's, uh, so we can save some money on that. And once a member, it's, uh, it's $40 a month or $110 per quarter or $420 a year to stay a member of that. And that gives you a lot of protection. And that's the legal defense fund? That's the legal defense fund. So if you get charged with failure to file or, or false W-4 form, we, we pay for the legal defense. We hire the attorneys. Now, let's, uh, we don't cover felonies like tax evasion, training business and different things, but uh, they're, they, uh, the government has more and more been charging, trying to charge felonies as much as possible because they're losing too many to failure to file. And maybe we can do something on the fund to cover part of those. But the felonies themselves would be too expensive to cover on these prices. So. The moral of the story, this person had good taste in motorcycles, I would say. He always had some money too because he bought a very expensive motorcycle. Uh, but I don't think he made the best judgment. If you don't know how to ride a motorcycle, I think you should probably start out writing something that the brakes are stronger than the engine. <laughs> and learn how to write. You get a smaller bike till you know what the heck you're doing. But this is a monster <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing. So just like that and filing or not filing, we're not actually pushing people not to file returns, but if you are a non-filer, we have services to help you. We have a legal defense fund to help you. If you're considering not filing, we'll, we'll be there. And, uh, so the moral of the story, but we want you to make an informed decision. I don't want you to do something because I said something. You can try to prove me wrong on some of the things we talked about today. That's kind of fun because that's an education while you're trying to prove it because it's hard to do. IRS can't do it, <laughs> and uh, nobody else can. This is also important. Um, this only covers the beginning. There's, you know, you can obviously get a lot more in depth. You're seeing that with Larry's presentation and stuff. But uh, I'm only giving you my opinions. 
So it's important for you to do your own research and come to your own conclusions. Uh, for those watching this on DVD or the web, we can obtain our free catalog at freeenterprisesociety.com or give us a call at 209-966-7040. Here's some other websites I like, Tommy Cryer's website, which right now I'm temporary administrator of with Truth Attack. That's a coalition of groups around the country. Still has a lot of good information on it, and we're hoping to continue that coalition. Joe Bannister, Freedom of Fortune. And I like his new one, Agent for Truth. I, I like that, agentfortruth.com. And uh, Sheriff Mack, he's got his, on his car, it's uh, uh, Have Constitution Will Travel. Remember that Have Gun Will Travel? John. Allen. <laughs> and Fully Informed Jury Association. Org, I think it's very, very good. If the jurors were more knowledgeable, we wouldn't be having people going to jail for doing nothing. So. Truth Tech Radio Hour is Monday through Friday, every day at 3 to 4 p.m. on Liberty Works Radio Network. And uh, Larry has a show on Friday. I have a show on Wednesday. Larry on Saturday. Yeah, you right. yeah. Yeah, this will be talked about again. Liberty Works Radio Network, which is Kottmeyer's group. John Kopmeyer from Save a Patriot put all that together, did a lot of work. And it has, uh, it's not just the internet, but it is for, probably Texas, you'd be on the internet, but there are three, four broadcast stations, three in Tennessee and one in Florida so far. And hopefully if, if things go better, they can add more and more. We're gonna have questions and answers actually a little bit later. I'm gonna skip that for now. Uh, that's the summary of it. What we're gonna do now is have a, like a 15 minute break. And, uh, oh, I want to do one more thing quickly. Just tell you what I have on the table back here. Before I go, we have the break. This is what Larry's talking about all day long. The statute of laws and old tax regulations. In here is two DVDs and one CD. CD with the tax regulations and these are the statutes of large. This is a dual layer DVD, eight, eight gigs and four and a half gigs. That's big. That's just that's what Larry worked. It took him four years, I guess, to scan these in and change them to PDFs and make them circular. Four years, something like that. Anyway, uh, so this is what he's talking about. That's available back there for a fifty-dollar donation. Uh, in memory of Tommy Cryer, this is his last meeting he did in Phoenix before he passed away. So we have several requests for that, and he's just a really great man. I think uh, many people would like to, you know, express interest in having that in there. Bob, also a lot of good information still about Truth Attack and, and his plan that he's doing in there. Former Iris Joe Bannister came to our last convention and did a little workshop for our work or three hour workshop with us. And that's what this is. And it's not what he talked about today. This is talking about things he's done to avoid and, and stay private in his own uh, personal life. Talking about banking, he talks about some of the dirty tricks of the IRS and different things like that. Can be very useful if you're a non filer. We're asking 25 donations for that. This is one of the projects Tommy Cryer started called Operation Innocence Revealed. And uh, this is a DVD and a CD. This was designed to be sent to U.S. attorneys and to judges, U.S. judges. It is five attorneys and one IRS agent, Joe Bannister, on here. And some of the attorneys, Larry's on there. Uh, uh, John Green, which is in the back, he is on here. And uh, Joe Bannister got three of them right here out of the six. But this is a DVD and it's only 47 minutes long and was meant to go to judges from attorney, you know, from peers. You know, if you and I give a judge something, what are they going to do with it? You know, probably toss it out. Now, if these attorneys, well-known attorneys like Larry give a judge something, they're probably going to what? Toss it out. But yes. a, I think we have a better chance of, with attorneys, you know, a letter yet from the attorneys and truth attack coming out. And if they watch this DVD, this is the CD of all the text and the, and the, and the and it's really easy to get to. It's categorized by liability, by who, who must file, what is income. Now for you, I think, if you're, I think you'll get a lot out of this possibly, but it's also a very good educational tool. Because one of the things I was afraid of when I first heard about it, it's gonna be very technical or hard to understand. But they really did this at an eighth grade level. That's what's needed for federal judges, I heard. <laughs> Can we copy it? Yeah, it's, I don't. I don't think there's any copyright on it, but uh, uh, it's it's uh, what we're trying to do, though, by raising the money is is 
as we raise the money, that'll give us enough money to get, because there's, I don't know how many U.S. attorneys and judges there are, but we have to package this different with the letters and send them out. So probably, uh, you know, it's going to take a little bit to do that. But out of all the, out of all, and we may only get a percent or a tenth of a percent to even look, you know, I don't know what we're going to get. But if we get even a few judges, it'll, it'll change things. And there's another one we're working on now uh, to finish with <coughs> just Joe talking to special agents. So there's 3,000 special agents. We're making up one with Joe Bannister to send out two special agents. Again, the idea there is he's one of them. They're more likely <coughs> to listen to it than if I sent it to him or you. So um, anyway, Operation Incident, we're asking a $20 donation for that. And we have a few other books back there. But anyway, that's, that's all we got. What time is it? It's quarter to three. Okay, let's 16 minutes for free. Yeah, we'll take a break until 3 o'clock, and we are good to. Yep, yep.